Welcome to Decades of Horror in the 1970s. This is the ant, okay? Treat it with respect, for it may very well be the next dominant life form on our planet, okay? This is episode 170, recorded August 17th, 2022. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore, Bill Mulligan, Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. Ah, joining me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm excellent. That is my obligatory response. <laughs> to the pheromone you issued yes. oh uh, pheromones, pheromone pheromone <laughs> all right also joining us tonight is bill mulligan writer director special effects guru and all-around nice guy and cat person how you doing <laughs> i'm doing okay summer's almost over and school starts in a week so yay and uh, you're a science teacher right i am and 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 I will certainly show that maybe on one of those Fridays when I've just had it, uh, maybe I'll show this film because it's got a lot of really top notch science in it. It's got Lots the of science. science. And, it's science and got it. the Lots science. Of science. The B I G science. All right. Also yeah. joining us tonight is Chad Hunt, comic book artist, host of Decades of Horror, Classic Era, and Eighties. How you doing, sir? I am fine. Fine, like a fine wine. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you know what that stands for, right? Right. Is this going to be a 60s reference? I, I can't. Yeah, I can't say it. It's too early <laughs> in the episode. <laughs> too early in the episode. Oh, oh my gosh. Um, all right, we are here tonight to review the film Empire of the Ants from 1977. Yes, B.I.J. And Jeff, who is B.I.J.? Bert Gordon. Bert uh, Gordon. Um, so Bert, this is uh, it's going to be fun uh, in some respect, but is it going to be good? <laughs> oh, yeah, Bill. All right. Let's. Uh, oh man, there's so much we could talk about. All right. How about we just dive into the card and get these going? Because I don't know where to take this, but downhill. All right. Empire of the Ants, 1977, directed by Bert I. Gordon. Written by Jack Turley and Bert I. Gordon, and uh, presumably based on H.G. Wells' story. That's debatable. Not really. I think it's yeah, debatable. Not, cast, not really. The cast includes <laughs> Joe There's Collins. Ants. <laughs> There's Ants. Robert Lansing, John David Carson, Jacqueline Scott, Pamela Susan Shoop, Robert Pine from Chips, Brooke Palace, Edward Power, and Albert Sound. <laughs> And he's Hello. Called, hey, Albert, how oh, you doing? Um, production company is American International Pictures. AI. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the filming location. You can you can mute yourself there, Bill. Uh, no, it... All right. Uh, filming locations: Fort Pierce, Belfade, Jensen Beach, Florida. Release date: July 29, 1977. <laughs> Uh, in the U.S., uh, the box office uh, was two, two, two Isn't that weird? From Wiki and six point eight in the Ultimate Movie Rankings. Um, I don't know how you get that. I'm assuming one is box office and the other one is theater rentals or something. Uh, yeah, and it rentals. might even have some VHS in there. Who knows? Uh, it's also known as H.G. Wells' Empire of the Ants, Angry After Nuclear Monster, um, and, and Killer Termitten. Okay. Yep. Termitin. Killer termites. Killer termites. Killer termitin. Termitin. I wonder if they translated every reference to ants as termites. Oh, I hope I, so. I, uh, I, the synopsis is con artist Marilyn Fraser tries to sell bogus real estate deals in an area overrun by, yes, you guessed it, giant ants. I love the picture you have there, uh, Bill. That is awesome. Is phone Which stop picture? ringing there, sir. The picture of the ants. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. Oh, no, that was Jeff. Too. Jeff did that. Yeah, yeah Jeff did that. It's hard to find uh, very clear pictures of the ants. <laughs> well, it's hard to see very clear pictures of the ants in the movies. So, in the movie. Right. In the right. movie. Right. 
All right. I did, I did not know this was one. filmed in my uh, hometown, Fort Pierce, Florida. Was oh, it really? really? Yeah. yeah. Jensen did Beach. You, did you see any ants? Oh, I saw a few. I, I had a few ants that lived there. Yeah. Yeah. A couple yeah. of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a nice poster. Yeah. That is a good poster. That's a good poster. Yeah. I'll bet that hangs in Joan Collins' house in a place of pride. It's... Yeah, yeah, right next to the toilet. Yeah. It's no picnic. Term, uh, termite gigante. Term yeah. <laughs> Big ants. Big Big, ants. <laughs> yeah, I think I can figure that one out. For some reason in Europe, they went for the termites instead of the... Mm. Yeah. Uh, all right, so what we do here is, um, after we have a, a good laugh at this movie, <laughs> is we are going to share when we first saw this film and what our first impression of it was. Who chose this? Yes. Oh, Chad, of Chad, course. Uh, uh, Chad, known. when did you first see Empire of the Ants from Burt and Gordon? And Yesterday. what was your first impression? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's your excuse. <laughs> I've never seen this movie in my life. Uh, but I did recognize a lot of the movie with it being shot in my hometown. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, did you really get out of town? Did yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I was, I was going. That look. That road looks familiar. That, <laughs> you know, but yeah. yeah, water pipes that don't work. It's home. Mm. Right. Yeah. Look at all that but, sugar. But this this is the first time I saw it. It was on on. I was just looking for something to watch, and I was like, mm, never saw this. And we've covered some other HGL stuff. This might be just as good. And was it? Oh my God! <laughs> don't don't ask questions like that, Doc. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, uh, my first impression was I thought this was a TV movie of the week. It kind of feels that way, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I mm. really, really did. And uh, oh my gosh, was this not a terribly good movie? Just terrible. Just terrible. No terribly good. Yeah. Just terrible. I like they, that. The, the acting was nasty. The special effects were, were nasty. <laughs> Some of the giant ants were pretty, I'll, you know, I'll give them credit. They they were big. They were big ants. Yeah. Okay. And yes. uh, so I, I, I try to find something positive in, 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 after saying a negative. So. They were big. They, they were, were big ants. They, they were big ants. The giant ants were uh, gigante yeah. termites. <laughs> the gigante termites. Yeah. Jeff, Mitten. sir, when did you first see Empire of the Ants, and what was your first impression? Uh just a few days ago. Um, <laughs> don't <laughs> uh, don't take this wrong. <laughs> Fans of Dynasty. Um, the only thing I've ever seen that I really sort of enjoyed Joan Collins in was the uh, Star Trek episode. So <laughs> I, I, it doesn't. I just I don't run and grab them when they have. Joan Collins. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, I love, I, I really kind of like Robert Lansing, probably based on uh, 12 O'Clock High when I was growing up. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's the first time I saw it. The effects are terrible. I mean, there's one time where they like, they're like looking around and they go, oh, look, over there. And then the shot is the ants are like eight feet away. You know, yeah, giant mm, ants, wow. eight feet away, mm -hmm. and so anyway, uh, stealthy. The uh, I don't know what what do you call it? was it was it uh, matte paintings or how how were they doing that or something else? But it the tech, yeah, the technical term is crap, crap. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, mm, that's, yeah, that's I don't know what else that's to it. say. Is that it? Uh, that's it. <laughs> Bill Mulligan, sir. I love the smile on your face. When did you <laughs> first see Empire of the Ants, and what was well, your first impression? I'm pretty sure I saw this on a late, late, late show um, mm -hmm. back back in the day. But I have to admit, this is the kind of film where I tend to multitask. Like while I'm watching it, I may also um, do some homework or turn it off and go to sleep, which is pretty much what I'm sure I did. Um, so this was, so I'd say the first time I've watched this from the dreadful beginning to the terrible ending was two or three days ago. Two or three and, days ago. And I, and let's just say what I love Bert. I Gordon. I, I love the man. He has made a lot of movies. Very few of them are good. Look at it. I, but, but they are all um, marvelous 
memories from my childhood. Some of them are still pretty effective. He's 99 years old. Last I checked, he's still alive. Um, and, and I mean, has been working, doing this stuff forever. He has not really changed his style of filmmaking much. This movie feels much older than it is. Um, and the special effects are what they are. I mean, you know, the beginning of the end, he had giant grasshoppers and he, he took a picture, took a picture of the set and threw some grasshoppers on it and they walk up the picture and sometimes they walk off the picture and they're just sitting in air. And the same thing happens in this one. He, you know, this is, but you know what? I, I have a certain affection for it. It doesn't work as well in this film because this is, if this were an older black and white movie, I think it would have worked a little bit better, but it had that TV movie look to it. It's not horribly filmed. I mean, it's actually fairly sharp photography, at least what I saw. Um, it's competently made. It might have been more enjoyable if it was worse. But that might be true. That might be true. Yeah. You know, it, I guess here's my problem with this. We spend the first 10, 15, 20, hour and a half, seemed like forever, getting to know these characters. And the more I got to know them, the more I was rooting for the ants. Mm. Uh, just a bunch of unlikable people thrown together, and then they start dying. Well, the old couple. The old couple. Yeah, yeah, the old couple. <laughs> They're old. They're old. I mean, if you think that they're going to make it, if you think the old couple in a horror movie like this is going to make it to the end, I got some news for you. But, uh, I, you know, the, but I can't tell you how many things my parents went to for no other reason than it was free. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. The, I, we should say, the premise of the movie is these people stupidly get into one of those timeshare presentations where they promise lobster dinners and a free trip to a tropical island all you got to do is listen to the presentation and once you get there you wish that there were giant ants and you could run into their jaws and end your mm. life right there you know never ever sign up for one of those things it is not worth it not so worth that part that part rang true um you know a john collins never bothered me much i did watch dynasty i'll admit it my sister wanted to watch it so we watched it and then my sister, you know, went off back off to college and I kept on watching it. So who's, who's really to blame here? Um, you know, she's not a great actress, but she didn't have to be in the stuff that she was doing. She had a certain look. She played it well. She played a miserable person, a real mm, stone cold bitch real well. So she parlayed that into a career. God bless her. <laughs> she did it that. Um, yeah. I'm like you, Bill. I, I saw this. I, I had to have seen it in either the late seventies or early eighties on like the movie of the, you know, at, mm -hmm. either at midnight or on a Saturday afternoon. And I, I watching it again for the first time since then this past week, I only recall the very beginning and the very end, any, everything mm -hmm. in between, except for, you know, the, you know, I don't remember the boat scene, but I remember some of the swamp because that's when the, the, Mandibles tried to go after Joan Collins, right? But I do oh. remember that <laughs> silly scene at the end when we get we'll get to it in a little bit with all the sugar and the the, <laughs> the queen ant spraying shit on there. Yeah. But anyway, this movie is so bad. This movie is it is it's 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 boring. It does feel like TV of the week, <laughs> so it doesn't have any doesn't have any pizzazz or you know oh. any. Um, I mean. It's workmanlike, is how I would put it. Yeah. it. Competent, but in a workmanlike kind of way. You know, it's like we put the camera here, we do the shot, we move over here with the camera. You know, it's not like there's no Hitchcock zooms, there's no nothing, man. Whoa. You and it feels so much like a movie of the week. And matter of fact, I there are times when I'm wondering, is Suzanne Summers in this one? No, that's Ants, right? Or Mansion of the Ants, or something like right. that. That's the other. <laughs> that's the other Ant movie, which was a movie of the week. <laughs> um yeah and uh and which we'll eventually get to here on the show um in the sure we will years, i'm sure uh so yeah this movie we when <laughs> when we get we do some not so goods and this is in a they not so good category <laughs> yeah. um if if you decide to uh 
sit down and 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 join us with this film you will it will you you will suffer along with us it is a suffrage movie <laughs> it's bad. bad this movie is bad but it's not bad as some of other as bad as some of other chad's picks yeah yeah that's true that's true i'll give you that i just figured he was on a <laughs> hb wells role because uh, the last one was island of dr morrow that, that mm, so. yeah well, let's say i mean hg wells is one of the great genre you know science fiction and slash horror writers of all time but how many good movies have come out of his work oh. island of lost souls mm -hmm. war of the world more of the world okay yeah you're right war, war of the world the several one. versions I, I even uh, like the Tom Cruise one. I love I the, like Tom the Tom Cruise, Cruise one. one. Time Machine is 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 okay. Like All right, I, yeah, you know what? Good. I take I take back my whole premise. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of good movies have been made, but a lot of crap ones have too. A lot of crap. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. if you can't adapt something, just have them go up against Jack the Ripper and call it Time After Time because that's awesome. That's yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Now, Bert Bert Gordon also did uh, Food of the Gods. Mm -hmm. Where once again he took he took a, a story oh, yeah. by H.G. Wells based and put on the Marjo premise. Gortner in it. Yeah. And, 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 and made a better movie. That was a much better movie. Yeah. And it is oh, yeah. also but... but it's not. I love the the novel's great. It'll never be oh. made into a movie, but uh it, Invisible I like the Man novel too. Lot. We forgot Invisible mm. Man. Yeah, that's a great movie. In fact, now that I think about it, now that I think about it, Burt Gordon did food of the gods twice because village of the giants is basically food of the gods yeah <laughs> true that's true yeah that's true. without the animals just the people mm -hmm. and actually it's a little bit closer to the novel it's a lot closer to the novel than food of the gods was i don't know giant giant chickens giant rats are much more entertaining than giant ants i yeah i have a if question you want to see if, if uh, one second if you want to see an ant movie that's scary face for them well, or them. Them, yeah. them, of course, them. Them, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the, love the them. The giant ant movie, yeah. You go, go sure. them. So, Bill, special effects, and maybe it's not special effects, but the uh, <laughs> the silver the silver goo that came out of the radioactive waste drums. Okay, I'm glad you, uh, you reminded me of that. That was actually the one thing that has impressed slash scared me, because... I'm not sure how I would do that. Uh, there, there's something you could try to do. You could take powder. You can buy like powdered silver pigments. And if you put them on water, it actually floats on the top and it looks like mercury. But I suspect they just got some mercury. Well, these ants, well, these ants were stuck in it. So it was like yeah. gooey. They were stuck in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, Chad, it, it reminded me of the stuff that oozes out of the forehead slit in Goki Body Snatcher. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think it could be mercury because mercury. All right. And I'm old enough that in school, in my high school, we used to play with mercury because apparently they had no idea of things like toxicity. Um, mercury is. Oh, yeah, you used to have those stuff. little. Maze yeah. With mercury yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, mercury thermometer should bite down on it and die. Um if you tried to put ants on mercury, yeah. they would not. They would not sink into it. You could put steel on mercury and it floats. It's some weird stuff. So no, it couldn't have been. Maybe they mixed mercury with honey. I don't know what they did. That's the only special effect in the movie that that baffles me. Baffled. It's a good one. And what at that point, it's me all how, downhill. It was how the holes got in there in the first place. They looked yeah. like bullet yeah, yeah, yeah. holes. Yeah, it didn't look like damage from being dumped over the side of a boat. Oh well, here's another thing. The whole premise was, was like the dumping next... nuclear waste into the ocean, so it sinks to the bottom of the ocean, and it's no longer our problem. But this this thing is clearly floating on the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and they're like a hundred yards offshore. <laughs> Science. I don't know. Yeah. Science. She blinded me. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right. Well, you were mentioning Bird Eye, Gor Bird Eye Garden, and his other films. So this, um, and I brought this Look up it. really quick. Of That's course, not even turns, all of them. He turns one hundred in one month from now, September twenty second. Oh. So that's God bless you, Mister awesome. Gordon. Thank yeah. you. Because I some some of the movies here, Spider, Amazing Colossal Man, The Magic Sword is actually a good movie. Nobody can take. That's one of the best fantasy movies, and it's it's great. Okay, some of the stuff is not as good, but it's all fun. Even yeah. King Dinosaur, which is terrible and just uses the same stuff we've seen from one million years BC and all. It's fun. 
Mm-hmm. These are fun movies to watch. Well, and we I, did, uh, the, the Colossal War of the Colossal movies. Beast on uh, yeah. Classic Era, episode 80. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, maybe this is a trend. That was Chad's pick for that. Nah. <laughs> he, you know what? The thing about Burt Gordon, he's a showman, too. And hey, some of it's a little bit carny. Like, I, War of the Colossal Beast is one of my favorite gimmicks where they say, watch the stunning climax in color. And you watch this movie, and this movie's in black and white. Blackity black, whitey white, until you get to the very end scene, the climax, which they put like a colored filter over it. So the very last 10 seconds of the movie are in a color. So did he lie? No, you got to see the stunning climax in color. <laughs> you inferred the entire movie was going to be in color, but you were wrong. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that. I mean, you know, sometimes when you get ripped off, but you get ripped off in a clever way, it's like, yeah, thank you. Good job. Thank you. That's yeah. some William Castle shit. You know? It is. It is. He, he, <laughs> he, is, he is a William Castle. That's definitely. And, you know, where else do you get a man pierced by a uh, large Hyperdermic syringe, <laughs> yeah, hyperdermic needle. That, which is, I, uh, it's one of the greatest you know, scenes in all of. It is. It's so time. silly. It, but that sticks with you for the rest of it your does, life. Does, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. You like, know, oh. it's like, it's like <laughs> I, I was, I was saying this the other day about the movie Prophecy, but also for for this one. Whenever the, the Academy Awards does their 100 years of film, and they show all these great scenes from Casablanca and the Maltese Falcon and the Godfather. If they just put in there 10 seconds of the prophecy bear throwing that kid in the in the sleeping bag against the rocks and the big poof yes, of feathers, yes. or the amazing colossal man throwing that hypodermic needle, I would stand up and cheer because those are every bit as memorable as some of the better scenes from classic movies. I mean, yes, they yes. will be with me till the day I die. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, well, you know that we don't have many cards for all the cast although we probably could talk about all the cast but of course john yeah. collins is a great is a cast one. actually yeah yeah now, joe collins has done a number of horror films in the 70s she, she did quite a few um tales that witness madness um of course probably most famously she did tales from the crypt she was in she the, was good in that she was yes, very good in yes um and uh she was in an episode of space 1999 really yeah. Yes. Oh, go, figure. go figure. She was she was a working actress who is now probably getting past what most would consider prime, and it, that's a hard age for an actress to get to because the roles stop coming in when you're not the young ingenue. And fortunately, they needed a slightly older character to play this female Jr. And she was she was just at the right age at that time. It, it, her ship came in, and and you know I give her credit for that. She she rode that. She was really big deal for quite a while. What for Dynasty on the TV? Yeah, show, I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, definitely, definitely. Um, and that I mean, that'll be forever. People will know mm-hmm. that. Even mm-hmm. even people. Well, I mean, at least for our. I wonder if young people know who Dynasty is. I wonder. Um, but not yeah, many. Not, not many, many do. <laughs> not many. Um, the other cast member that I and I'll I'll pass around for the rest of you, but Robert Pine. Was chips right? He was the mm-hmm. he right. was the, the... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Chris Pine's dad too, I think. What? Yeah. Christopher yeah. Yes. Pine's dad? Yeah. Really? Yes. Yep. Well, he's a sleazeball here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. Jerry Chandler, our our good friend Jerry Chandler, just posted something on Facebook just a couple days ago about how Chris Pine, as he's getting older, is looking so much like his dad. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. I'd never yeah. made the connection either. I I I'm got... I'm today's year old learning this. I did not know well, this. No. <laughs> He's wow. got 235 credits on IMDb, and then somewhere in his bio it says he was in over 400 episodes of uh, chips television. Yeah, yeah of TV oh, series. television. Yeah, because they 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 if you're on a show, that's one credit, no matter how right. many episodes right. you do. Yeah. So as oh, far right. as IMDb is. Um, but I don't remember him being in too many. I mean, he was in Mother's Day. That, that's no, that's not the that's not the oh, same Mother's Day. One, yeah. That's a different Mother's Day. Let me get yeah. down. I don't remember him being in too many genre shows. Right. Um, to me, it's always chips. I mean, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but hey, when we grew up, there were 
three channels. So yeah, you watch something, right. and Chips was the show I watched when yeah. Chips was on, and uh, I had love Chips. I don't know why. <laughs> Looking back at it, but I did. Oh, I also remember. <laughs> I remember. I remember from uh, the Apple Dumpling Gang rides again. I don't know about you, but I love the Apple Dumpling Gang rides. <laughs> Yeah, Chad, I, I, Chad. I, 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 yeah, I'm there. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, Guns Tim Smoke. Conway and Don Notch. That you just can't beat that. Oh, no, that's you true. Can. I love all their films. Uh, no, he's yeah, in I, it, it, tons of television shows. So yeah. yeah. So you, uh, you, who else would you 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 said you knew Robert Lansing? Are you, you do? I mean, oh yeah, we're a favorite. Well, he was uh, General Savage on Twelve O'clock High, which was a television show in the 60s about uh, a bomber squadron in World War II. I think they were B-17s. Um, so he was the head, and then he only stuck around for one season, and then uh, Paul Burke took over. I forget what his name was, but he became the head of the, you know, whatever you call them, squadron or flight or whatever. So sort of like combat in the sky, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was also in 4D Man, which I, I was going to say. Like, gonna we're going to do that at some point. Uh, oh, for sure. And he was also era. he was also in classic uh, Star Trek. He was um, yeah in one of the early episodes, right? Yeah, he played. Uh, I forget the name of it, but he played a character called Gary Seven. Um, that oh, yeah. came from yeah. the future. That was oh, actually that was supposed to be that a, was pilot a pilot for a spinoff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the cat that could turn into a beautiful cat woman. <laughs> oh, and and Terry Gar oh. was his uh, was going to be his partner. That that had money written all over it. I can't believe they didn't go ahead with it. Well, oh, wow. he was just weird stuff. He was the uh, control on the uh, Equalizer show in the eighties. The oh. guy that Edward oh. Woodward called. Oh, okay. uh, and he also played Bill. Uh, I know we've talked about this before in Branded, the the show that starred oh Chuck Connors. Ch Chuck Connors. He played C Custer in a three parter. He also, if you're into that kind of stuff, as somebody who worked in a bookstore for a dozen years, uh, Ed McBain did a series of uh, cop oh, really? shows called 87th Precinct, and he played uh, the, the title character, uh, Corella, for a year in the early 60s. Hmm. Uh, so anyway, yeah, lots of stuff like that. The Nest, we can't forget The Nest, and nest. I see that's on Tubi, so I might have to resurrect that again. We had that lined up for 80s one time, and, and uh, it disappeared from our source. Mm. So. Tubi, Tubi is like rescuing all these movies from a book. It's <laughs> kind of amazing. Um, do we know, uh, are, who's familiar with uh, John David Carson who played Joe? Because I was not. Other, other than he had to... Uh, Add the David because of Johnny Carson. Mm, yes, oh. that makes sense. I, I didn't know that much about him either. He he looks familiar. I'm sure I've seen him and stuff, but he doesn't have a ton of credits. Um, he was the voice of Todd and Dean and Dino Boy and Space Ghost. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's not like that I would. Not oh, that Falcon I would know. Chris. Falcon Chris. Okay. He did ten episodes of Falcon Falcon Chris. So other than that. Uh, had a part in Pretty Women. Pretty Woman. He played. Pretty he much. played. An this is a weird movie, but there's one, um, a movie made by George C. Scott, "The Savage is Loose," and he played uh, George C. Scott's son. It's a strange mm. little movie. <laughs> oh well. Mm. Now Albert Salmi, who plays the Creature sheriff, Creature from Black Blade. Oh, there you go. Anyway, Albert Salmi, who plays the sheriff, we get him late in the show. After they get out of the swamp, yeah. <laughs> now I re I can I recognize this actor. He's a character actor, and he definitely looked very familiar. But I was hard pressed to tell you what I remember him in. Jeff, I'm sure you could tell us a lot. Well, the first one is Daniel Boone, the TV Daniel show. Daniel Boone. Oh, what did, first, what did he play in that first first season of Daniel Boone? He played. Uh, I thought he was Daniel Boone's friend, a guy named Yadkin. Uh, he walked around in a fringe coat and, a, you know, uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, the other thing is that I just 
in the last year have gone through all the old Alfred Hitchcock TV shows. He was he's in several of the those like three episodes of Alfred Hitchcock that are pretty good. Um, like everyone, yeah, and I we just found out. About... Okay, he well, he was in uh, an episode of the uh, Escape from Planet of the Apes. Mm-hmm. Was it the TV show or the movie? That was the movie, 1971. The movie. Yeah, I think movie, it was in yeah. Dragon Slayer as well. But I, I noticed when we go through the IMDb, there's one show that keeps showing up, Petricelli, which I didn't even think ran that long, but apparently everyone was in yeah. it. And he started, well, then, you know, back then, those cop shows, and there were a lot of cop shows, every week oh, there, there had to be a bunch, a bunch of bad guys who did something wrong, and then our hero tracks them down. They, right. they provided a lot of work. And, and you think about the shows that we have now, they have these long seasons with the same characters. They don't have the villain of the week. It's it's a villain who's the villain over the entire first right, season. Right. Well, and I think it's a lot less work. Uh, Petrocelli, I think he was like uh, he was a regular. Yeah, yeah. he was yeah. one of the guys. He was like one of Petrocelli's. You know, I don't know if he was the investigator for him or what he was, but. Uh, hmm. And I just realized, Doc, I don't know uh, if you, maybe you were already saying this right, but I, I've always called him Albert Salmi, and I saw in the in the trivia that he uh, his name was pronounced Sammy. That oh. L is silent as in salmon. Oh, okay. Oh. oh. Yeah. But, so Barry, Barry Newman was Petrocelli. I was like, like what the hell is this Petrocelli? Yeah. I yeah. never watched that show. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> never watched. I, I, I know it, but I've never watched. Well, that's not right around the time of Vanishing Point. When was Vanishing Point? Oh Ooh. man, I do remember Vanishing Point. I well, there's remember. there's a weird. You know, you mentioned uh, Robert Pine, so this is I think it's just one of those weird things. The couple, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Robert Pine, Larry Graham, and his wife Christine are played by Robert Pine, the father of Chris Pine. And Brooke Palance, the daughter of Jack Palance. Ah, nice. Oh, wow. It's wow. just a weird. This is royalty. Ex- isn't it? Yeah, I guess, you know. <laughs> it's just weird. It's just a weird coincidence. Uh, and it, of course, it also stars Jacqueline Scott as Margaret Ellis. Um, I, yes, Jeff. Oh, she's got lots of great. She was in the very first episode of Outer Limits. Oh wow! Hey Doc, we're rattling, we're rattling again. Are we? Okay. Is that better? Oh. Uh, and so, <laughs> first episode of Outer Limits, a Twilight Zone, and Alfred Hitchcock, and best yet, five episodes of Have Gun Will Travel. Ah, nice, nice. Can you imagine being Brooke Palance? I mean, can you imagine your a date comes to your door and he opens it up and. He's a little Jack nervous because you're going to meet there? someone's dad. <laughs> and it's Jack Pallant. Oh, man. I would run away, join a cloistered monk. Uh, you know, just, yeah, forget it, man. Yeah, you, That's the you worst. Would, that would definitely um, yeah. Uh, yeah. hit the ground and do one-arm push-ups yeah. Yeah, on his command. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, of course, we know Pamela Susan Shoop. Shoop, shoop. Shoop. Troop. I knew that was too. coming. Oh, is she, is oh, she the, nurse? Ner- the nurse? She's the she nurse. Gets, gets her face She's burned. The one that off, gets man. it in the uh, yeah in the hot tub, oh, or the whirlpool, or whatever it was. Yeah, the hospital whirlpool that has a setting that could actually boil beef. Like that's a safety thing right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. You know. One of the effects that I thought actually kind of worked was in the the inside the uh, was that the sugar factory or whatever it was factory, supposed yeah. to be where the yeah. queen ant was inside that glass booth that kind of yeah. worked for me. Yes, I, I it had know. it sort of did. Yeah, it had the 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 prop right, so which they didn't like and we didn't see it all, but apparently it like scratched up all the actresses and actors and actresses. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was probably made from fiberglass and God knows. Well, I think yet. you had a, in the Joan Collins. There's a yeah. A in the, her, there's a picture uh, of her joking around with up it. to the end. Yeah, yeah. There yeah, she no, is. No. She's got a big smile on her face, but apparently, people people have said if you ask her about it, she ain't smiling. 
So no, she, not she was not happy movie. about this movie. Yeah. She got she was paid forty five thousand dollars to be in this movie. That's oh, I'd be saying. smiling from ear to ear. What the hell? Yeah, in, in 1977. Yeah, 1970 so. money that could buy you that could buy you a car and a house. Yeah. yeah. Small mm -hmm. house. That oh, not, not maybe not necessarily a small house. Maybe. Um, we do have some footage. So if you wanted to see if you All right. want, for those who are watching okay. and not listening, if you want to see what the ants look like. If, like Chad, around, you're, you have a hat around. on, hold on to your hat. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, my God. This, this is so Hey, hilarious. he's getting on here. Get him off of here. You're not allowed <laughs> uh, Hey, wipe me off the time. Time. Yeah. That, that might be the best thing I've seen all day. That is yeah. awesome. Um, I, you know, I, I'm struggling to to come up with anything else to say about this movie. What do we it's, else do we is, want to say? This is a tough one. <laughs> well, I want okay, to mention the one other, the old couple are two people that were immediately recognizable, I think, if you watch okay. TV in the yeah. 60s and yeah. 70s. But especially Irene Tidrow uh, had 205 credits and she was in Ooh. two different Twilight Zone episodes. Okay. But nice. she gets like, they just sort of ignore her, you know, her... Yeah. I think she gets like maybe one or two lines. Well, another one where they they open the door and there's about eleven billion ants out there that have just snuck up on them. Which I realized they didn't hear a single thing, right? No, I, I know in real life ants are quiet, but that's because they're tiny. They're not going to be crunching leaves and trees beneath their ginormous. You know, no, okay, but you're right. They're like, look over there, and there they around, are. These are walking around screaming like, like, you know. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was well, the women at first because it sounded like a woman screaming, but then hey, I'm sure it was. It's the ants, yeah. <laughs> I always like that. They, he did that in the spider too. That the, giant uh, insect starts screaming. I guess that's you know. so. The the Jacqueline Scott character, the who's like the the secretary that just got fired or the administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. Um, she's really kind of honeying up to. Captain Dan, the Robert Lansing character. Captain Dan. Yeah. Yeah. Low rent. And Kenny, then at some Kenny point. Rogers. Low rent. Kenny Rogers. Oh my halfway, God. halfway through Perfect. the, uh, um, while they're, while they're traveling, Joan Collins gets attacked by Anne or something, or she sees her, her partner, Charlie get taken and she's totally a mess. And then Captain Dan like is got her all, you know, cuddled up and escorting her through there and, and you get a couple of glances from yeah like that was good character. like that it, it was, was weird somewhere and it yeah yeah and then at the end it ends you know every time something happens she starts screaming his name you know when he goes i feel the i, I feel like there's a scene that got edited out so they could put in some more footage of them paddling through a swamp because you know yeah maybe, there, there needed maybe. to be three or seven more Seems yeah. like that. See, uh, so you heard a little <laughs> schizophrenic. I mean, we take so long just paddling through the swamp and suddenly coming across ants that are two feet away, and one person gets picked off and another, and and then all of a sudden we get to the town, and there's actually fried. something interesting going on here. It's like, why did they waste so much time getting to the empire, to getting to this mm. town, and doing the doing the little flip where everything seems fine, but actually they're controlled by the ants. That's a much more interesting story than this swap thing going on here. Um, That's they another could have thing actually... I didn't get. It was they they just fought this these giant ants, saw their friends eaten and mutilated and killed, and what's the first thing Joan Collins says? She puts her hand on her hip and goes, I could use a shower. <laughs> she could, too. <laughs> they, they should be in, in trauma. <laughs> shaking, shaking well, and, uh, uh, hey. Well, I also <laughs> thought it was funny. Robert Pine is the one who's screaming and telling them to go left when they come to the fork in the river <laughs> yeah, or whatever yeah, that is. Yeah. So they go left, the ants attack, he gets killed. And then I'm I'm literally in my mind, I'm hearing Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Run away, run away. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately turn the boat around and go the other go back the other way. Run away. Run away. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, anyway. let's go ahead. We've got a lot of feedback. Um, uh, right, so good, okay, good thing. just mention, just mention one thing, more too. thing. The you know, the special effects are pretty weak all the way through, but when they finally get to the part where the queen is spraying her pheromone, it's literally just a fog machine, like 
you, they yeah. put you there, it's like poof. Yep, just yep. blows into your face. And like, <laughs> but it works. Next... That works. That works. Did you see the one guy using these when he said pheromones? I <laughs> know <laughs> <laughs> he did air quotes. Oh my yeah. god, no. pheromones. Yeah. Um, oh my god. No, they're just feeding the ant Mexican Why did... food before each guy comes. <laughs> so the the uh, there was also a thing about the uh, uh, the sound guy. That he got in a fight with the director and threw. Oh all yes, yes. Oh my swamp. god, that's good. <laughs> what? All this... Yeah. So they had to loop everything. Oh no. Know. <laughs> that's a lesson. Never get into a fight with your sound guy. Listen, no. and I know seriously. Just, just as an aside, I have seen more short film projects die on the vine because of problems with the sound guy. Mm. But you know that they usually the director or the writer, whoever is hassling the sound guy, when are you going to finish the sound mix? You got the sound mix? And finally, the sound guy just says, screw it, I erased over it. I hate you, never call me back. So, um, yeah, be nice to your sound guy because, boy, yep. that, that's a that's a hard thing to fix. Yep, yep, sounds important. You learn yeah. quick, right? All right, well, let's go. Ahead. We've got to wrap this up because I want to get to the feedback, which is going to be a lot <laughs> more entertaining than this damn movie. Was. That's true. Um, so, uh, Chad, sir, you pick this. Please tell oh. us. Recommend this. Don't recommend it. Let us know what it is and it's what's what scene stood out to you. I can't. There's, I can't really recommend this. If, no, you, if you you're you if you're an H.G. Wells fan and and you were watching this because you know we've been covering other H.G. Wells stuff, this is not one you should really seek out to watch. It's it really is as bad as we we've all said it is. It's just got that static movie of the week feel to <laughs> it uh, uh, and uh it doesn't go anywhere there's whole scenes that just go on forever that don't go anywhere and um even though some of the characters uh there were a couple of the characters um that were cool but uh you can't really get into the characters anything like that so i just i can't really really recommend it but i know there's people out there that will will watch it anyway and uh, good luck to you. Good luck to you. Somebody, yeah. somebody out there loves this movie. Uh, yeah, somebody out yeah. there, this is their favorite oh, movie. There, there yeah. is. Yeah. Somebody. And no there. doubt. Somebody. My favorite <laughs> favorite scene stands out is I loved when the two, the older couple steps out of the the house and it's just there's ants everywhere. Yeah. Mm. It was it was almost comedic. Uh, right. In in like oh I don't hear anything let's go outside and then they're they're everywhere. They're everywhere. It, it almost had a comedic feel to it. Uh, but it was supposed to be mm -hmm. scary, but that just <laughs> kind of stood out to me as as weird and and uh, funny. Weird and funny and funny and funny. Jeff, sir, you're going next, and I can't remember the order. But what we, <laughs> what is your recommendation? And uh, do you have a favorite scene? Do you have a scene that stands out? <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be favorite. <laughs> I can't. I can't recommend it. But I. But well, I don't know. I mean. No, I can't recommend. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but uh, my favorite scene, and this probably tells you about how good the effects were, uh, is when the one guy, um, the one couple that gets it first, I think, he runs off away from the other group and is checking out the facilities, and there's supposed to be these mm -hmm. water pipes sticking up out of the oh ground. Oh my gosh! Yes! Yes! Mm -hmm. They're just stuck in the sand. <laughs> and he picks them up. Hey! Thought, oh my god! Uh, he collects anyway. like five of them. <laughs> he just like holds on to them. <laughs> and then later we see him laying on the ground with blood smears on him. Yeah. yeah. And weren't the ants and the ants visual the way they represented the ants' vision? Wasn't that just epic? Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> like looking through a perforated sheet, you know. Of, yeah. Right. Was it even anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God! All right, Bill Mulligan, sir. Uh, okay. Let Look, if you like if, if you like H.G. Wells, if you're an entomologist, or even if you're a fan of Bert I. Gordon, this is not a great movie to recommend. Uh, watch another Bert Gordon movie. Watch The Spider or The Magic Sword. Those are a lot of fun. This one just has unlikable characters, long scenes that go nowhere. It just, it seems very old fashioned, but you know, it's got more blood and more sexual innuendo, but no, it's, 
I, I hope Mr. Gordon makes another movie. He'll be 100 years old, and I think it would be great. And if he does, it's probably going to have a giant something, because that was his thing. <laughs> and why quit when you've been successfully doing that for as mm, long as he has? So if, if by some miracle he sees this, I'm sorry we didn't like the film, but I really do like Bert I. Gordon movies. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank him for all the stuff he's done. He doesn't do a lot of conventions or stuff, but... He's still out there and still last I, last interview I saw he was very old and still sharp as a tack. So mm, yeah. thank you, sir. But this yeah, movie. I, it was weird. In in the 70s, we got like a slew of B movies and ant movies where mm. they just like yeah. attack people. Um, yeah. There's like there's like the one with Suzanne Summers, there's one with a mansion, and then there's all the B ones and Swarm. Oh my Swarm. God. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know what brought it on, but they were everywhere. All right. Um, on I think, land. Was, I think oh, it might have been. There was the Hellstrom that. Chronicles, which was a documentary that basically oh, yeah. said the yeah. insects were going to take over, and it was it was part of that echo the echo horror mm -hmm. of that time. They can have my job. There you go. <laughs> I uh, this uh, this just put it out there that. The, it's these kind of movies that give the seventies a bad name. <laughs> this is a bad movie. Um, but at the it, same time, isn't it so seventies that this movie? It, it exists? is yeah. so so seventies. Yeah. Um, uh, I you know I can't recommend this, but at the same time, it was kind of like watching a wreck, car wreck. You couldn't stop. I mean, other than unless you fell asleep, which is likely, um, you just could. It was just like what, <laughs> what, and you know, people. It, it's the. It, you know, it's just a bunch of people and they're trying to get from point A to point B and who's going to make it, who isn't. It's, it's kind of like, you know, what, what is it like, uh, uh, the Poseidon adventure, but in a smaller boat and being yeah, ants yeah, instead. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's not terribly well made. The effects are kind of laughable. And even the people you want to see like Joan Collins, you know, they are not very good. Um, it's it's I mean, yes, I agree with you, Bill. I like Bert I. Gordon movies. I mean, there's there's something about his films mm -hmm. that are like just drive in fun, right? Especially yeah. the old the earlier ones, right? Uh, you know, they, they have a colossal, charm to them. Yeah, the Colossal Man, the Colossal Beast movies, I love those two movies and, and the other ones that we talked about. But this one, not so much. Not so much. Um, but I <laughs> I talked about uh, Mr. Pine, right? From I'm going to call him Mr. Pine. Um, Robert Pine, right? Robert Pine mm -hmm. from from mm -hmm. the Chips. His character was such a sleazebag. Not only mm -hmm. did he get incredibly rapey at the beginning, but yeah. later he just lets his wife die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And then gets kind of fucked up in the head about it, and he's on the boat yeah. going, well, I didn't, you know, it's not like I just left her there to die. You know, <laughs> was and that, what talking about. And he's wow. just really, he's like going all in, man. He's right for probably just, he's owning it. It's like, dude, this doesn't need all that. Um, he obviously he, wasn't thinking about his father-in-law. No, no, not at all. Jack Collins, right? <laughs> oh my God, no. And then, um, and then, you know, oh, it's yeah. like, I need it. We need to go left. It's my life. It's on the line. <laughs> it's like, dude. <laughs> um, I couldn't wait for him to die. It was great. Um, yeah. Yeah, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> on a what scale? On a one to. <laughs> it's just straight up. <laughs> um, all right, yeah. Jeff, sir. Uh, let's just put this whole thing behind us and let's jump into feedback because we've got a lot and it's a very entertaining feedback. Let us have it. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm going to skip the first one because it's sort of an archived one uh, and go up for. Uh, we got a few on episode 168, Santo and Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman. Nice. First one's from Scott Wells. I just want to say kudos to Mr. North Carolina 2 for remaining in mass persona through the whole episode. We'd like to uh, thank you as well. <laughs> Bill. Yeah. How sweaty was your face when you took that off, Bill? Uh, pretty bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Very chafed. Chafed. Normally... Scott says, normally I listen to these podcasts either in my car or while doing things at work, so I don't see the videos. However, this time I listened to it on my drive home from work. Since I had a contract, I had to visit a good hour from home the day you released it. And then when I got home, I sought out the video on YouTube and watched it. 
Thank you. My sir. first time wow. watching the video of this podcast. Nice to put faces and masks to the faces <laughs> for a change. <laughs> is it? Is it really? <laughs> oh my god! I know. In my case, it is. No, I'll believe. Oh. I'll believe that oh. if it's a podcast with crystal on it, but just there us now. I wonder if I sound bald. <laughs> anyway, uh, I am. <laughs> I am somewhat oh. relieved. Uh, that Doc came around and decided he enjoyed this Santo film since it was his first. I knew the rest of you were fans and would like it, but I wasn't sure about him. So what a relief. Hmm. I may have to watch more of the videos in the future, if only to see El Gizmo make a cameo or two to check out what's in the background of your offices. I caught sight of some DVD collections in the back of Jeff's videos that I also mm. own, so that solidified what I suspected. You nice. folks at Decades of Horror are my tribe. Mm, tribe! That, I like that. That's, that's why we're here. Uh, my personal favorite scene in San Juan Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman, it's a toss-up between our two gigantic masked wrestlers covertly trailing someone <laughs> while driving in a tiny open convertible. <laughs> Yes, I yes. can't possibly see why anyone might think that was strange or really any scene that involved Rufus Rex, the world's most vain werewolf. <laughs> Rufus Rex. And, and, the, and the most appropriately named one, Rufus Rex. Yeah. He's yes, a good yes. boy. <laughs> and I want to thank you again for the shout out, Jeff. I am humbled. So yeah, Scott, uh, really appreciate the feedback. And uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, I hate to say this. I can't remember the name of your website off the top of my head, but check it out. And he's the one that suggested, you know, please do this so I can have a reason to watch it again. So I can't, I can't remember the name of the website. I feel bad. I visited it and it's very worth mm -hmm. your trip, worth the trip. Yeah. Good, yeah, good yeah. Website, man. Um, well, I'll, we'll, I'll put a link again in the, in the show <laughs> notes. Cool. Um, looking forward to Star Crash. Oh, wow. Well. Are you? Are you really? <laughs> <laughs> just, just you wait, sir. <laughs> All right, the next one. On Sano and Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman from Lone Wolf. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know Santo had that many movies. I didn't Well, either. hopefully my buddy Godzilla can break that record one day. Then he can truly be king. I've never actually seen these Santo films, so this was a great history lesson for me. I'll check them out. When I can, nice mask, Bill. <laughs> well, it covered my yeah. face, so yeah, it was a good mask. Any mask that covers the whole face mm. is, is a nice one. I'll take that from you. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, one from Jerry Chandler on Ooh. Santo and Blue Demon. Jerry uh, Chandler, and of Literally. course, he is educating us. Uh, as Jerry does much to my appreciation there are a number of wrestlers still wearing masks it's still a cultural tradition in Mexico and Japan what mm -hmm. Doc was referencing wasn't quite the mask wrestler concept that was Bray Wyatt as the fiend yes yeah Does that ring a bell yeah. yes yeah. oh yeah yes a mask but extremely complicated to explain if you're not following it Even however if you are it's are hard still... to explain <laughs> However, there are still a few masked wrestlers of this <clears throat> nature wrestling in the U.S. The most well-known is going to be Ray Mysterio Jr. His uncle, Ray Mysterio Sr., was featured <laughs> in the low-budget horror WrestleManiac. WrestleManiac, which is a good title. As for the movie itself, I just love these films. And you're absolutely on the mark with the tone being more like the 60s Batman TV show. That's probably why the riff on the character El Santo in Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter fit into that wonderful cheese fest so perfectly well now i gotta go watch jesus christ vampire yeah. hunter I, I, um but yeah pretty much every sand on blue demon film i've ever seen is just a fun film and worth the look thanks jerry yeah, yeah thanks, thanks, jerry. jerry thank you all right now for the kind of way back machine uh, from Mikey Z on episode 118, Octoman. Octom hey! Octoman! <laughs> <laughs> so, felt like Wayne's wow. World all of a sudden. Yeah. Which, which was the 70s, uh, with walls, decades of horror, all of them, uh, first YouTube video. 
Uh, I came across your first YouTube video and it had to be Octoman. It had to be. As yeah. Madeline Kahn intoned in Young Frankenstein, woof. Harry Essex steals from himself in this bad early 70s creature from the Black Lagoon riff off. It could be yeah. riff off. Could be ripped yeah. off with bottom of the barrel budgeted effects by Rick Baker. This makes the 50s monster of Piedras Blancas look like a well executed tale in comparison. Hey, don't uh, be monster dissing of on Piedras monster Blancas of Piedras is one Blancas. of the best one. Yeah, that doesn't need to be compared to anything. That movie's <laughs> awesome. Love that movie. My second Kerwin favorite Matthews. guild man of all time. Kerwin Sorry. Matthews tries his best in this, but doesn't have any stop motion monsters to play against. The creature designed by Baker is well enough for its budget, if there was a budget. But as pointed out by the group crew, it was poorly shot in too much light to accentuate its flaws, or that accentuated its flaws. Beautiful Pier Anjali sadly essayed her last role as the woman along for the ride. Jeff Morrow is highlighted in the credits and is on screen for about three minutes. Yeah. Lucky. I first saw this on TV in the early 70s, and as a not-yet-teenager, I did not remember anything about it other than the design of the creature was cool. I rewatched this after seeing your podcast, and I thought, with advanced years, I might find some appreciation for it. Boy, was I wrong. The direction was terrible. The dark was better lit than this. <laughs> oh, 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 my God! Wow. Zing. Unless you talk about the shots of Octoman in full day for night. I can't blame Rick Baker um, for a suit that isn't capable of having more than two limbs moving at one time. Great review by the Groo Crew. Not a film to recommend. I would recommend God Monster of Indian Flats over this swampy mess. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's an interesting yeah. comment. I still don't have the Blu-ray yet. Of God Monster? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he says. All right. Is that it? Is that All right. It? That's, it. that's it. All right. Thank well, you, sir. I, 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 before we get to next episode, um, I just want to touch back on the mask wrestler thing. Uh, I just want to bring up a movie from 2017 called Low Life that has a mask wrestler in the entire film, always in the mask. Movie. And it is so good. So, Jerry Chandler, find that film. Check it out and let me know what you think. All right, Jeff, I, I, I guess since I chose the next film, um, after we all deliberated on my choices, uh, <laughs> I guess I'll introduce what it is. Um, this is one that has come up in our conversations quite often through our past 160 episodes, 170 episodes. Um, and uh, one that uh, Santos Elm Jr. would bring up quite often as well. And it's called Chosen Survivor from 1974. A little more on the sci-fi side, but still has some horrific elements. Uh, I think I have not seen it. And matter of fact, the only thing I know about it is what everybody has brought to the table with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing this. Uh, Jackie Cooper's in it. Bradford Dillman. Richard Jekyll. Alex Cord. Now, Alex Cord is that the same Alex Cord that was in, um, in uh, the Incredible Melting Man? Is, uh, is that a different no, no. Alex person? Uh, Diana Mulder and Barbara Babcock. Um, so, yeah. How how did you describe this film, Jeff? In the, when our pre-show, you described it in a certain way that I found interesting about being stuck in a. Well, they, they right. there's a nuclear war, and the government chooses these certain people to be saved. No pheromones involved, but still saved. The best uh, and the brightest, yeah. And uh, they're put in this underground facility, and it turns out that the underground facility, in order to save money, was carved out of a giant <laughs> underground cavern full of vampire bats. Vampire bats. No prey. And who are they going to go after? Anyway, <laughs> how chosen survivors? How does a nuclear uh, holocaust turn into a bat movie through government incompetence? <laughs> uh, so for some reason, I mixed up Alec Cord and Alec Rebar. So just 
Yeah, Ignore okay. me okay. whenever okay. I say somebody is somebody. <laughs> um, all right. Well, there you go. That's our episode for tonight. We hope you enjoyed our review of Empire of the Ants, as short and delicate as it was. Uh, thank you all so much for the feedback. I yes. love that we have so much of it. And Jeff, thank you for bringing it to us. Uh, if you want to give us more, it's, there's a variety of places to put it from the, the website to our RSS feed um, and to the YouTube. And where else do we get it? We also get it from Patreon, right? Uh, yeah. Patreon, uh, feedback Facebook. at magazine.com. Yep. The email, yeah. Facebook, anywhere you put it, we'll find it. And we'll thank you. Yeah, really, thank you so much for the feedback because sometimes we'll yeah. be like, oh, the, this movie, there's not a whole lot to say. Thank God we have feedback. Uh, eventually, we may get to just nothing but feedback, and then people will be sending us feedback about the feedback, and we won't have to watch any of these things. <laughs> you know, there, yeah. I was thinking the other day, I, I know we, well, I we'll all be killing, taken over by we're, robots. We're, we're killing yeah. time, I guess, tonight, but. Um, as I was choosing the movie for next week, um, I was going through all the remaining films that we have not yet done after doing 170 roughly films. Like we've done a couple twice, and then there's a couple that have like more than one on it uh, when we did the disaster films. There are so many more films. Of course, there's a couple big ones we've got in our back pocket for special episodes. Yeah. But, um, and, I mean, there's a lot of named ones mm -hmm. that people probably remember that we've already done, but there is so much trash and garbage out there that we have oh, yet yeah. to do. We have, oh my God, it's just <laughs> amazing. The hardest part is finding it, is actually getting where it's streamed. Right. I know there's a couple of ones that, you know, we, we mentioned Trog mm -hmm. um, is one um, that we talk mm -hmm. about. Uh, I want to do uh, Love at First Bite, but I don't know if we'll ever get to do that one. Because of the copyright issues, and the copyright uh, issues have to do with the song. Yeah. Um, but maybe we'll get to do it someday because that movie, I, I've only seen it once. I need to see it again and remember how bad it was. Well, there are still <laughs> three films from the Black Saints' uh, favorite horror film. From oh, the really? That haven't mm -hmm. been reviewed. Uh, mm -hmm. Kingdom of the Spiders. We haven't done Shriek that. Shriek of the Mutilated. Oh. I don't think so. We haven't Shriek done of Kingdom the of the Spiders? And I forget what the other one. Brotherhood of Satan. I, I was looking for Brotherhood of Satan for this oh, for the next one. I wanted to do yeah. that, but it's not out there. Um, I, I love can't... Shriek of the Mutilated. It's terrible. I saw it's that so one good. is available, and I went, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one, I pushed that one way over. Somebody yeah. else. I'm going to give that one to Chad. Here you go. That could be your next I've done enough bad <laughs> movies lately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there, there's tons. tons. I, I can't believe we haven't done Kingdom of the Spiders. Kingdom of the Spiders we haven't done? That's shocking. Nope. nope. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. That's the one it's with Scott Shatner. William Shatner. Yeah, yes, William Shatner. Scott yeah, William Shatner. Uh, we might have to correct that sooner or later. Oh, of course, yeah. The Exorcist is, uh, you know, is a big one on the vine here that we want to yeah. do. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, mm -hmm. I think, is another one. Have we done? We did Halloween, right? We did Halloween. Yes, we did Halloween. I mean, for, yeah, yeah, so there, there are some big, big ones, low hanging fruit. That, but we, we are saving those for our uh, our anniversary episode. I was just, um, I was just glancing through Shutter before we came on, and I see they dumped a whole bunch of seventies and eighties things. I'm like, ooh, here's some. Fodder. A lot of giallo got put on. There's a lot of there's a lot of giallo in our future. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, but I it's always here, room. Here's my prediction: in the coming years, we're going to get a new <laughs> a new se series of films uh, of The Exorcist, um, a new trio of films from the same oh, yeah. uh, writer and director mm -hmm. who are doing the Halloween films. Um, we will be doing. The Exorcist by the time that comes out. Probably coordinate with it, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, just because that's the time to do it. Yeah. Uh, so I guess what I'm leaving is like, if you want to leave us some comments, some things that we would really like to hear is recommendations of films that we need to cover. Yeah. Mikey Z, not the swarm. Or well, Frankenstein Island. I already, got, I already got. I already got shot down on the swarm. Anyway. Uh, no, well, no, we'll do the swarm someday. We'll do the oh, we'll swarm do. someday. We'll do Frankenstein Island one day. You know, eventually that 
that barrel's got to be scraped all the way to the bottom. Yeah. So you've, you've rolled the toothpaste tube all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> Philippine Filipino movies we got to do. There's oh. Milligan movies we got to do. Um, there's a Mulligan lot of movies. Milligan is it Milligan? Oh, oh, Andy, Andy Milligan. Milligan. Andy Milligan, oh, right? Oh my, oh my God. Yeah. There's a whole gaggle of those, and of course, a lot of Santos movies. There's a lot of. Uh, I almost I almost chose Frankenstein 1980. Do you know what that one is? There's and there's 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 well there's I'm gonna stop because there's a I'll lot bet. of garbage out there. <laughs> I'll bet there's some hidden gems out there. Oh, there has to be. There are. Yeah. There are. Yeah. The uh, I was there's a couple and there's foreign films that we need to do as well. Yeah. I want to do the uh, Black Magic movies from China. Oh yeah, um, yeah, they're fun. But, uh, but they're not available at the moment. Um, it would be fun to do a Coffin Joe movie. Yeah, I, you know, I've it never seen be. a Coffin Joe. Mm -hmm. I've never seen one. Can't, I, I think I think a lot of the really good ones were from the 60s, but yeah. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. And there's plenty of Paul Nashie films that we can do. Uh, there's still there some you go. There's still some Hammer films we haven't done. Time out. What happens? We got to go. Uh, we got to we gotta go. We're supposed to be somewhere else. <laughs> Guys, thank you for joining us. Bill, Chad, Jeff, thank you. This was a lot of fun. So much fun. Yeah. We're just gonna keep shooting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's say good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.